Okay, how long to earn $1,500 on $10,000 at 10% per year? So last chapter in exponentials, we learned which formulas to use and why and when. So now I'm just going to choose the formula and we need to work through it slowly. So we have money, so F equals the present value times 1 plus the interest rate to the exponent time. But I decided to throw a little curveball right at the beginning. So to earn $1,500 on 10,000, well, if we earn $1,500 on 10,000, it means that, first of all, our present value is 10,000. But our future value, well, we need to take what we earn and add it to our present value so we get 11,500. So that's my future value, 11,500 is equal to my present value, 10,000 times one plus my interest rate is 0 0.1 to the exponent time. So I can start by dividing both sides by 10,000 and I get 1.15 is equal to 1.1 to the t. Now, I could put this into my graphing calculator. I could do guess and check like we did last chapter, but I can't do change of base, so I have to use logs. So in the notes, I've arbitrarily logged both sides, brought my exponents down in front, divided both sides, and changed of base, but I'm simply going to go straight to log form. So remember, the base of the exponent is the base of the logarithm. And remember, the exponent is the answer. Now I could, for example, type this into my calculator with math alpha math on TI-84 or log 1.15 divided by log 1.1, rule number three, using a TI-83 and I get 1.47. Now it's talking about how long, it didn't say an amount of time, excuse me, 10% per year, so that would be years. Now just a quick logic check. 10% of 10,000 is approximately 1,000. So to make 1,500, it would take a little bit longer than one year. So again, as in all of our answers, a quick logic check at the end is absolutely necessary. Okay, how long to triple your money at 10%? Very similar, future value equals present one plus r to the exponent t. Now remember if we triple, we're gonna arbitrarily start off with a present value of one, therefore if we triple, one times three is three. So we have a future value of three equals one. r is 0.1 to the exponent t. So I can simplify that, three equals 1.1 to the t. Then I can change to log form. So the base of the logarithm is the base of the exponent, and the exponent is the answer. So I could type that in my calculator, math alpha math, and I will get 11.43 years. Another logic check how long to triple at 10%? Well, if we do 10% per year, it will take approximately 10 to 12 years to triple our money. One year will be 110%, the second year will be 121%, etc. Tripling our money using a logic check after. Okay, we have an earthquake. Now, earthquake formulas is gonna be I equals 10 to the bigger earthquake minus smaller earthquake Richter. Now, this time they gave us the intensity of 250 times. So we can replace I with 250, 10 to the. Now, an earthquake with a magnitude of eight is 250 times as intense as an earthquake of what magnitude? 
So that means that eight is the bigger magnitude earthquake. So now we can log, we can change to log form. So log base 10 of 250 equals 8 minus s. Solving for s, adding s to both sides, s equals subtracting log 250, 8 minus log base 10, 250. Therefore, s equals 5.6 Richter magnitude. A little logic check. A 6.6 .6 would be 10 times as strong, a 7.6 would be 100 times as strong, and an 8.6 would be 1,000 times as strong, so somewhere in between 7.6 and 8.6, around 8 will be 250 times. We went more into Richter magnitude in the last chapter. Okay, how long to grow 10,000? A present value to a future value of 12,000 compounded quarterly at 10%. So let's start off with the formula with compound interest. So 12,000 is our future value that we are growing to. We're starting at 10,000, our present value, times 1 plus the interest rate, 0 0.1, divided by n. n is the number of times we compound per year. If we're compounding quarterly, that means four times per year. Please review word problems in the last chapter, exponentials, to understand those better. t times 4. So if I divide both sides by 10,000, I get 1.2 equals 1.025 to the 4t. Now I can change to exponential form, log form, excuse me. Log, the base of the exponent is the base of the logarithm. And then I can simply divide both sides by 4. And t equals 1.85 years. It actually doesn't say any units in the question, so that's actually incorrect, but it would be whatever units the question was talking about. Okay, how long to grow 1,000 bacteria to 5,000 at a continuous growth rate of 0.05? So, as we saw in the last chapter, we have all sorts of exponential formulas that we're going to be using. But specifically, if we see the word continuous, we have to use formula with E, excuse me. E is the continuous growth rate, 2.71. Euler's number, look it up. Please review all of the formulas. Have the formula sheet from the last chapter printed out. Make sure you, you know which formula to use and why. This formula, if we have continuous growth rate, we use this formula. So F, 5,000 equals P, 1,000. E to the 0.05 is my rate, T. I'm going to start by dividing both sides by 1,000. Therefore, 5 equals e to the 0.05t. Now if I have e, I can't use log. I have to use ln, ln. It is the button below log on your calculator. Log base e of a number is just ln e. Ln has a base of e. So we need to turn it into lawn form. Remember, the base of the lawn or logarithm is the base of the exponent. And then to solve for t, I can simply divide both sides by 0 0.05 and I get t equals
32.2. Now, as you notice in the question, I haven't included any years, so make sure that you include your units, which I have just forgotten. T equals 32.2, whatever time frame. So again, remember, print off the formulas from last chapter, watch the videos on the word problems. We are using the decay and growth formula. The future value is equal to the present value times the rate to the exponent lowercase t over capital T, where lowercase t is the time that's happened and capital T is the time for the growth rate to occur, what we are looking for. So. If I'm decaying to 20%, well, I'm gonna arbitrarily start off with a present value of 100, and then I'll have a future value of 20%. Not to get confused with decaying 20%, meaning we'd have a future value of 80. So if we have a future value of 20 and a present value of 100, our rate is a half-life, which is 1 half, now the time that's actually happened is 500. That goes on the top. And capital T, what we're looking for, goes on the bottom. I'm going to divide both sides by 100. 1 half is just 0 0.5. So now I need to turn it into log form. So log base 0 0.5 of 0 0.2 equals the thing we're logging, equals the exponent. And then now let's just do a little bit of math really quickly. 4 equals 8 over t. At home, practice timesing both sides by t and dividing both sides by 4, but t is equal to 8 over 4. Again, we're not going to be doing all those algebraic steps. I want you to be able to start to be able to visualize how adding and subtracting to both sides and multiplying to and dividing to both sides works. So we can simply do things like this. T equals 500 over log 0 0.5 of 0 0.2. So capital T equals 215 years, 200.34 years. Now a quick logic check. A half-life from the banana problem in the last chapter explains that the half-life is the time it takes for something to be half of what it started. So if it takes 215 years to be half, well then half of 100 is 50. Half of 50 Another approximately 215 years will be about 430 years. We'll be at about half of 50 is 25%, which makes complete sense that in approximately 500 years, we'll be about 20% of what we started as. Okay, a substance has a half-life of five years. So that's actually how long to be 10% of its original. So the growth and decay formula. So present value of, let's go for one this time. If I wanna be 10% of what I started off with, I'm 0 0.1. That's a little more difficult than the way we've been doing it before, so keep that in mind. 0 0.1 equals one half-life T, we're looking for how long over the time directly for the half-life to occur. Now, the reason why I did it this way is so I can just cross off this one and I don't have to divide both sides by it. So 0 0.1 equals 0 0.5 to the T over five. Now I can change to log form, log, base 0 0.5 of 0 0.1 is equal to t over 5 and I can simply times both sides by 5 therefore t is equal to 16.61 years. 
Find the number of compounding periods. Interesting. Okay, so we're compounding. So F equals P1 plus R over N to the TN. So to grow 10,000 to this number at 10% in five years, and we're looking for the compounding periods. So future value, 16288.95. Equals 10,000 times 1 plus the interest rate of 0 0.1 divided by n to the exponent t, which is 5. We're looking, we know 5, and n we don't know. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10,000, and I'm going to get 1.628895 one plus 0 0.1 over n to the exponent 5n. Now, there is no possible way to solve this algebraically, so we need to say y1 equals the left-hand side and y2 equals the right-hand side. We need to put it in our graphing calculator and find the intersection to solve for n. So, if I say y equals 1.628895 and open bracket 1 plus 0.1 divided by x, close bracket to the exponent, open bracket 5x, close bracket, I'm going to change my window because I know my y values only have to be about as high as 2. So, window, I'm going to change my x who knows, realistically compounding maybe 10 or 20 times, let's say 10, and y max just about 2. So if I put that on the graph, I get the line y equals 2, y equals 1.628895, and I get an interesting looking graph that comes up through like this with our intersection right here. I can press second calc 5, enter, 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 and I get my intersection of 2, 1.628895, obviously. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Now, I was working with n, so n is equal to 2, meaning we're compounding semi annually twice a year.